Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to another Early Access Premiere Draft of Duskmorn. Thanks again to Wizards of the Coast for providing me with this Early Access promotional account, and without further ado, let's get into the Pack 1 Pick 1. This is going to be the final Early Access event. Forgot to say that. We are late enough that they're going to stop doing these drafts in about an hour, so I'll jam in as many games as I can before they kick me out of the event. Uh, but yeah, let's just get into it here. I think I'm just going to start really simple with Scorching Dragonfire, just an efficient removal spell for any red deck. Fits into the highest variety of decks. I've tried to do some Ride of the Moth stuff, never panned out incredibly well for me. And the other options are just like a bunch of reasonable creatures and build arounds and stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to take the one just really solid efficient removal spell out of the pack. Great for any red deck. And for pick two now, what does this Leyline even do? Creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. Oh, so it's like a it's a creature type focused ley line. It's all about making your whole board bunnies for like a bunny deck or something. Interesting. Unnerving Grasp is a pretty great card in general. Get a 3 mana 2-2 two, two and bounce your opponent's best permanent to slow them down. But Fear of Burning Alive could be a solid follow-up for the Scorching Dragon Fire. You gotta get to 6 mana for this and you need Delirium. But if you have Delirium, dealing 4 to your opponent and 4 to one of their creatures is kind of wild. So yeah, Fear of Burning Alive and Unnerving Grasp are both very good uncommons. Guess I'll stay open for now, just take the blue card here. Just take the best uncommon out of each pack. Which means another Unnerving Grasp. Pretty deep into blue. After that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I have enjoyed the Surgical Suite Hospital Room. We had this in a red-white deck, and it was awesome because we just had a lot of two and three mana value creatures. And if you get into board stalls, you get to dump some mana into putting counters on your attacking creatures too. It was a pretty fun, pretty good card, but Unnerving Grasp, just Mana War. If you've never heard of Mana War, that was a three mana two two jellyfish. When enters the battlefield, Return a creature to its owner's hand. That kind of just tempo play creature has just been great in limited since like the very first draft format. And Ur Unnerving Grasp is no different. It's a very solid card. Okay, so again, being deeper into blue than the red, we can go for this blue black uncommon here. Try to make a blue black eerie deck. Play a lot of enchantments to trigger all of our eerie cards. Could also take the underwater tunnel slimy aquarium here, which is kind of dual purpose. If we stick to blue red, that's a deck that's all about playing and unlocking rooms. So this is going to fit well into that deck, but this is also going to work well in a manifest dread deck, which is blue greens build around. There's a lot of cards that will make it so whenever you're flipping up your creatures, they're getting even bigger. So when you're manifesting creatures, you're going crazy, or cards that like trigger every time you manifest dread. So I kind of like the Underwater Tunnel Slimy Aquarium as kind of a dual-purpose card. Fit, fits really well into blue-red or blue-green if we go down one of those two paths. Okay, none of these cards are good for blue-red or blue-green, though. I guess Beastie's okay in blue-green. Just take a Glimmer Light, fine, flexible card. Two mana, one, one, and a plus one, plus one equipment. The one one's an enchantment as well, which matters for eerie cards. I just don't think these uncommons are very good. They could glimmer light. Pick six. Glimmer burst. Draw two and get a one one glimmer here. Staying really heavy into blue for now seems good. Pick seven. Pretty late coordinated clobber, and you have to tap your creatures to deal damage to the opposing card, but that's a very good way to trigger your survival creatures. And it's just efficient removal up front anyway. Yeah, I'll go for the clobbering here. So we're one card deep to blue-green manifest, and one card deep to blue-red rooms. Pick eight. We want to go one card deep to blue-white enchantments. I actually do have two Glimmer cards that put enchantments on the board. And the Underwater Tunnel's also an enchantment. Yeah, you know what? What if I just take, like, one card in every color here? And 
we'll decide in pack two if we want to be blue-white eerie, blue-black eerie, blue-red rooms, or blue-green manifest. Which I guess means I can just take the random flyer here. Although we could try to do some, like, three, four-color room nonsense with this gazebo thing. Yeah, I don't think Piranha Fly is going to be super important to whatever archetype we end up playing. So, we could try to do some mush pile with the rickety gazebo, since there's really no risk in taking that there, since whatever else we take is probably not making the cut regardless. And here's a chandelier. If we go for a really heavy self-mill deck, this makes sure that we don't mill ourselves out completely. It's also hilarious. There's a giant chandelier with a fiery skull face coming at you. Someone needs to put that monster in their D&D &D campaign. Another glimmer burst. I don't really like these rooms, even if I want to be the blue-red room deck. I just don't think they're very good. Manifest Dread has been also just a lot weaker than I had hoped. It's mainly just been two mana two twos the vast majority of the time. Pick 12 Skullcap Nuisance. This is not the most impressive build around Signpost Uncommon. Just seems like a decent card on rate. But I guess now we are one card deep into everything. There's our one black card. Alright. Well, let's see what we open up in pack two. Hopefully just a great rare that gives us a clear sense of direction here. Okay. We did not open up a great rare. We opened up Leyline of the Void, which I guess technically is a great rare. That'd be awesome to open up in paper. Solid card for your collection, but it is not good in draft. So, I'm probably just taking the bottomless pool here. Nice little one mana bounce spell no matter what later in the game. You can start drawing some cards off of it if you're getting attacks in. So, it's a card in our main color that we're definitely going to play. Probably good enough to take over the Cartographer or Demon, which I think are like a little bit better, but they're in colors that we aren't 100% locked to like we are in blue. It's the Charred Foyer Warped Space, so it draws you an extra card every turn with the Charred Foyer half, and then later you can dump six into the Warped Space. So if you just draw like a land off the top and then like a six drop, off of your charred foyer later, then you can just be like, okay, well, I'll just dump all the mana into the warp space and play the six drop for free, and then get that mana efficiency off of it later. I think this card's actually decently solid. I don't think it's better than Fear of Falling. So uh, we're probably supposed to just take Fear of Falling and stick really heavy to blue, but I really enjoyed the blue-red rooms deck, so I really wouldn't mind just hopping right back in there off of this charred foyer. And it's not a bad reason to head red. I don't know, I, I Fear of Falling is probably just a better card, generally. 4-4 four, four flyer that shuts off a flying blocker every time it attacks is kind of ridiculous. And 4 mana for the card engine is a little bit high especially when you have to play the cards the turn you draw them, since it's it's an impulse draw spell. Again, still really good in the, in the rooms deck, but we're not necessarily heading there. Let's not lock it in. I did play that deck literally one draft ago, so maybe, maybe don't do it twice in a row. For content purposes, we need six cards in our graveyard. But then this is a three mana five five flyer that spits out a two two every turn. My god. Late game play, but a super strong one it looks like. I'm going to take that over the bookworm. Which is awkward because the bookworm would be our card that we can be like, alright, there we go, we're green blue. But... 
It was in the same pack as a cool mythic rare blue spell, so take the cool mythic rare. Now, Vanish from Sight seems fine as blue interaction. Or the Duskmorn's Domination. Take the Vanish, it's more efficient. Pick five. Another ticket booth for the really mediocre room. Another Glimmer Burst. Trial of Agony. Seems just really good for super aggressive decks. I don't think with that deck we'll grab another Glimmer Burst. Another Fear of Falling. Well... I already knew I was super blue, but now I'm like super duper blue. And what is super awkward, is it's actually looking like Piranha Fly would be decent in this deck, because it kind of looks like we're just mono blue flyers, where we're just winning the game with evasive threats our opponent can't block. So having taken this rickety gazebo over the first Piranha Fly is actually not working out. We're like the one deck that might actually just want a 2-1 flyer. Just a super blue heavy deck with nothing but flyers in the end. All right, I think we can probably move to blue black here. Play a nuisance, an amalgam, and an attic. Pretty good enchantment count, especially with like our finishers being fear of fallings here. Seems solid. So adds to our surveil as well, playing the Skullcap Nuisance to fill the grave more for the Oculus. Blue-black enchantments and flyers nonsense. Yeah, pick nine intervention and miasma demon. Black's looking pretty open. I'm going to grab that cheap removal though. I don't have a lot of good ways to actually kill anything since I'm a blue deck here. I just have bounce spells really. Just unnerving grasps and a bottomless pool. Vanish from sight. All right. Blue, black, eerie is where it's going to be. Primarily just trying to play a lot of good flying threats. We got to play a different deck. That's the plus side here. This doesn't look like insanely good or insanely exciting or anything, but looks nice and cohesive. And it's an interesting little strategy we have not played yet. Pretty... Nice curve going for it. Lots of evasive threats. I enjoy that. Looks like a solid deck to end things off with. And we even get the blue-black duel. The Bloodsucker is also good for this deck. We're playing tons of enchantments. This will play like a 4-5 lifelink, which is obviously very good. Now we got the Fear of Infinity. Well, we did open that. We can probably get past that. And we're really low on removal, so I'm actually going to take Murder and see if we can wheel the Fear of Infinity. Because we're the only deck that wants it. This was like literally last pick. Um, got some other good black stuff late. A lot of good blue stuff late. I don't think anybody else is this exact deck. Somebody might try to splash around with this thing, but hopefully it comes back and we can just take the Murder here. Pick two. Probably the Tunnel Surveyor. 3 mana, 2, 2, plus a 1, 1. It's just a good stat line up front. Two creatures off one spell. But one of those creatures is an enchantment. Which is very nice with eerie cards. Pack 3, pick 3. Twist Reality, Appendage, Amalgam, Meat Locker. Get out. It's kind of fun, kind of flexible. And we're much deeper into blue than black, so it seems decently castable. Maybe get out? I have liked the meat locker, though. I'm going to go for a meat locker here. Another enchantment for the eerie stuff. Stuns our opponent, slows them down, and it turns into our big draw spell. Cut one of these Glimmer Bursts. Pick four. 
playing almost all flying threats at the top. Well, yeah, no, we're not actually playing that many flying threats, but our biggest threats are flyers. So I was thinking unable to scream would be decent removal, but we do have winter's intervention, murder, vanish from sight. I'm, I am going to take unable to scream over piranha flies still. Pick five. Counterspell. The three three manifest room or the five five mana death touch. Five drop. Take the counterspell. It actually looks decent in this deck. Pick six is pretty much nothing. Take the cursed windbreaker. Another flyer I could toy around with. I don't want to play another underwater tunnel, but are there other options or bad? I hate that this card's a sorcery. If this were an instant, it'd be pretty decent. It would still be kind of expensive at three mana. It's like an impulse for three, but I just really don't think it's it's good as a sorcery. Okay, I'm definitely cutting Enter the Enigma. Don't need to give something unblockable for one turn. It's not that I have the Drowned Diner. I could cut the Derelict Attic. Pick 8, Smoky Lounge. Oh. My lover. Sad. We'll take a Piranha Fly. Be the Flyers deck. There's our Fear of Infinity at Wield for us for our blue-black Flyers deck. This, this is so sad. Alexa, play Despacito. I have to cut some cards here. Oh, another Piranha Fly. Let's go. This bottomless pool might end up being pretty sweet. Because the Flyers... The Piranha Fly is all hitting our opponent drawing cards, maybe. Okay. I have to cut like 10 cards out of here. It's going to take a little while. Let's see. What is this? 3-3? Three, three? Yeah. Creeping Peeper? Definitely not Creeping Peeper. This is a late game finisher. I'm just going to put it at like 6 mana. Which means this curve is reasonable. All these cards. Got the Fear of Failed Test. Maybe the Fear of Lost Teeth. Okay, I'm definitely cutting the Peeper. And Fear of Failed Test. Eight cuts, wow. It's underwater tunnels. Windbreaker. Derelict Attic. Okay, seven cuts. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards set aside. I mean, hey. I really don't like these glimmer bursts that much. Probably still want to play one of them for a little bit of card draw. But I can cut one of those instead of one of these cards. So I can put one back in. Let's try going a little controlling on this run on this one. We'll run the twist reality and the don't make a sound counter spells. This is our 40 card deck. Looks pretty cool. It's very different. Tons of flyers, some counter spells and removal, lots of bounce to slow them down as well. Little blue black tempo control deck. Yeah, very cool stuff here actually. 
I don't know if it's going to play out well at all, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Let's head into that final bit of gameplay for the Duskmorn Early Access events. Alright, here we are on the draw. We got a Counterspell on turn 2 for their 3 mana play. And then we just like bounce them and tap them and just slow them down all around. Okay, start with a split skin doll, get a 2 1 down. Draw a card, discard a card. Just gonna hold up, don't make a sound here, and just counter the 3 drop. Overplaying a piranha fly because we don't really care about getting aggressive. Sure, I'll counter that. I mean, it turns into a 7 7 later. So, it'll need to be dealt with eventually anyway. Ooh, if we can fill our grave, we've got the abhorrent Ocul Oculus here. Get the gigantic flyer. So, I don't really want to bounce this doll, though, so let's just meat locker it. Save the bounce for something that has a less good enter effect. Like a cheerleader, it's a fine card to bounce. Although now I'm holding up a counter spell, and if I don't cast it, I glimmer burst. I can still bounce the cheerleader next turn. Okay, no four drops, let's draw two. Good cards, good cards. Now I can just fully kill the cheerleader. I'd prefer to have hit a fifth mana here, so I play Surveyor and do it. I can't hold up my counter spell without the fifth mana either. If I want to cast anything else, I'm going to hold up the counter spell. I've got the 1 1 to block the 2 1. I can just take 2 damage here. Pass turned it is. Alright, well, intervention the cheerleader. Card number three in our graveyard. Sure. We're gonna manifest when it dies. Still be a 2 2 on the ground, our tunnel surveyor might be able to block. Hit land five. So now I can play a two drop and hold up the counter, but I can't play tunnel surveyor and hold it up. I don't really want to bounce the manifest card. There is an inherent risk to doing that. Because if it's an instant or sorcery under here, that's better than a 2-2. Most instants or sorceries would be better than a 2-2. Um, then it's just stranded there without bouncing it. But by bouncing it, oops, you gave them value. But it is a creature. Okay. Yeah, giving first strike on the attack's pretty good here. That means we get jammed for five. But we've still got good defensive plays, now we can bounce the Slayer itself. Wow. Hold three cards in hand here. Sure. Okay, Skullcap Nuisance is quite the draw. We have a 1-4 to block the 2-1 now. So a 1-4 can block a 3-1 first strike. Still chilling, because I'm one land drop away from casting all these other options while still holding up the counter spell. So I am holding it up for dear life. So it feels like they're playing around it. Six lands on board. They did not play another land, they just sat there, didn't cast anything. Trapped in the screen. Eleven life, I'm just cashing it in. Let's protect the nuisance. Four out of six cards in grave. Mm, go to eight. Let's 
This is card number five and six, and then Oculus wins the game, right? No matter. Okay, they can't kill the Oculus. Card's gonna be insane. 5-5 five, five Flyer, we manifest Dread as soon as we pass the turn. Let's go. Even if they kill it now, we've manifested once. So I think our bounce spells can actually bounce our own stuff. Yes, so I could bounce my own murder to be able to cast it later. It's so dumb. Four damage to four targets, but they have delirium, so it's eight damage to four targets. Yeah, I mean, I've completely lost to that card before, and, and here we go again. Still sort in this game. I've got quite a wide board still somehow, and the uh, unnerving grasp here to put in work. Card is silly though. Even sillier than our eyeball. It killed our eyeball and its manifested card, and two more cards. I should have expected as much. That's my life. <laughs> should have jumped with the 1-1 one, one there. Well, it is what it is. You live and you learn. All right. Her opponent is on the play, so we're on the draw here. Not a great sign. They're on the play with a white deck with a snowballing steamrolling rear. Be a quick dropout for the blue-black deck, but we've only got like three minutes left to play Premier Draft, I think, at this point. So O2 drop <laughs> might have to be our final record for Duskborn. Yep. I've got the murder for that and the bounce spell for it. I think I go for the bounce spell first because... Um, I can still murder it later, and this way we get a creature on board while interacting with it and slowing them down. All right, recast the role model. Ooh! Actually might be very in there. Because they're just stuck on triple planes right now. It could actually be a winning game with those land draws. Oh, there's the second color. I am a pro jinxer. Innocuous rat. Okay, that doesn't do anything against all the flyers, which is what we're going to be playing. Five mana, I can piranha fly and murder the role model now. Seems like the line holding up twist reality if I need to counter something. And then fear of falling next turn. Managed to hold it all up. What are you doing in my swamp? Gotta vanish from sight after this. If this doesn't do it. Oh, it moves all its counters somewhere else. Oh, shoot. I didn't even read that. <laughs> I'm gonna level with you. I didn't even read that. God dang it. Let's 
gonna vanish a rat from sight. At least the rats are pretty bad top decks. They're probably just gonna shove it on the bottom. Yep. I'll take the counter spell. Two mana to use it. We've got six. Should be pretty easy. Guess I need another land to play Fear of Falling and hold that up. Which is awkward. But I can amalgam and twist reality together first. Yep. I already had on board, so that should be enough. Amalgam holding up a counter. It's 4-4 four, four non-flyer if they discard a card to it. And until then, it's a 1-1. One, one. I guess they can discard the card at instant speed. So that they can eat my uh, my 3-2 here. Okay, now I can Fear of Falling. Holding up, don't make a sound. Alright, so probably just discard something and then try to reanimate it. Hopefully with the 5-mana reanimate spell and they don't draw land. No, they drew a land! Don't you dare. Oh, really now? It's obnoxious. Because we know they were stuck on lands for a long time, so they had to just go land, 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 land for the draws. They're running the triple black? Oh, I guess because they can reanimate it as a 6-6 six, six flyer. God, that sucks. Well, Fear of Falling still hits them for four a turn. Winter's Intervention. I guess I don't outrace them, do I? I make that a 3-4 on the ground. Yeah, no, I don't. I guess I barely outrace them thanks to all the cards in my hand. Ooh, another Fear of Falling actually I think does do it. Okay. Or if they take that block, then we outrace them as well. Sweet. We got the counter unless they pay two. That makes up for it. They have one top deck, and it's probably safer to hold up the counter spell awkwardly. Shroud Stomper, counter, and win. All right, that will do it. Wait, hold on. We were actually already winning the race because there's another card I didn't read. This is the, the draft of, of reading the card explains the card. This is until your next turn. So we were winning the race already, no matter what, because this wasn't going to have... It was still going to be a 3-4 without flying when it attacked. It wasn't going to become a 5 for it. So this doesn't just shut it off on blocks, but it shuts off the counter attacks. So Fear of Falling is like even better than I thought it was. Card is egregiously good, and we found a victory here. Alright, it looks like they did not shut off the Premier Draft gameplay cues yet, like I thought they were going to do, as it's been up for 12 hours now. That's usually when they shut it off, but we're still in there. Probably play our full five games here. If I don't lose three, <laughs> that's possible too. Okay, let's just roll with Fear of Infinity and use that to race. Okay, that's a pretty good deal for us, I think. Because the uh, Fear of Infinity is definitely going to come back later. And we still have a 2-2 on board. It's the patch play thing. 
Okay, awkwardly unable to scream is really bad against that. Do I just grasp it then? Because we can't attack through it or block it at all. It would be turning it into a 2-4. But I would be picking up my flyer. Now let, let's firmly grasp it. Oh, I guess there was no point. Either way, one of those is on board, one of those is engraved. Doesn't really change anything. But technically this creature is not going to flip up into anything. So no point in having it on board. We could just put a land on board there. And it works the same. Well, here I go bouncing again. That's how you mana war somebody out. Just tempo them out of the game here. Keep bouncing their only blocker and jamming in with all the tutus you made. Perfect. That's an unable to scream target. I'm going to do that and play the infinity thingy. This way we get a bunch of damage in this turn still. Cool, they're down to 10. Ooh, a board wipe. Still got that fear of infinity and plenty more threats. Very flavorful board wipe split up. The plaything is back. But we definitely outrace it in the sky. To the point where I just hold on to the counter spell? You know what? I am gonna do that. We crack back for five next turn if they don't play another blocker. Because we. Flash out a 3-2 and counter whatever else they're playing here. Killer's Mask. Not that worried about that. I'll just trade Amalgam into it and it'll be fine. I guess at this point we get mana efficient and manifest for damage. Since I'm just going to slam down the fear of falling here and not hold up the counter at this point with them as low as they are. Sick. Put them to four. They're dead to one fear of falling swing. So here it is. They murder the fear of falling, but they are still taking two in the sky on board. Menace up the double striker, but fear of infinity is still getting there. Not immediately, but over a couple turns. Here's another flyer.
Grievous Wound. So I don't gain life anymore, and any damage they do to me is doubled. Oh, no, I lose half my life. <laughs> That's pretty nice. I lose a bunch here, but I still win the game, which is the important part, which is why we just save the counter for something that would make us not kill them. And we just get lethal. That is another victory for the blue-black deck. Let's go. All right. Another look at the clock while I'm in the waiting room here. It is 12.11 a.m. So very, very late for me. I do work at 6 a.m. at my day job. Not tomorrow, thankfully, but this is way past my bedtime. So I'm just going to play one more game with this deck, win or lose. This will be our final game of Magic for the Duskborn Early Access event. Got to make sure I keep my sanity and my health intact for, for uh, daily life stuff. And here's quite the final boss for us. So here we go. The Ham TV, that is Kyle Rose. Very, very good drafter. Very prolific drafter. Has played in a lot of pro-level events. And it's an excellent stream if you're looking for some high-level draft commentary. So, quite the final boss for us here. We'll see how this works out for us, but Kyle's got some terrifyingly good decks. He's a very skilled drafter. So starting out with the underwater tunnel to surveil a little bit. Okay, we're just going to play a Skull Cap Nuisance turn two, most likely. Start poking for one a turn, then holding up our instance. Four Cycle the Branch Snapper. So green and blue has a lot of manifest dread cards, like the Slimy Aquarium. Cards that'll trigger whenever you manifest dread, whenever you play a face down card or flip a face down card, stuff like that. I think I'm holding up this counter for the rest of time. Okay, that's worth countering. That's gonna put a land into play tapped every time they manifest dread which can really add up quickly. Okay, so the counter's out of the way, so I can just tap out here. Get as much flying power going as possible. Actually seems pretty dece. Five mana is a lot for the locker room. But once we get there, we've got a lot of flyers in this deck to draw the cards off of. Bookworm, we probably want to just make a 0 2 so that they don't keep drawing the cards. Yeah, Bookworm draws an extra card for free here, doesn't even make them discard. And then I can also Winter's Intervention, the 2 2. Fear of Infinity. I do want land 5, but that's just a good flyer, straight up. I can't respond to them flipping up a Manifest card, so I'm just going to kill it right now in case it's big. Ooh, it's a good one. It's the 1-3 that draws a card every time they Manifest Dread. So like when you Manifest Dread, you put one into play face down, the other one into the graveyard. With this, whatever you're putting into the graveyard is just going right into your hand. So pretty happy with that outcome, getting that killed. Now we bounce the 4-4 four, four to slow them down and drop a Fear of Infinity. Looking for land 5 as the draw, and there it is. Some blue-black flyers nonsense doing its thing. Let's draw the cards, right? 
Got plenty of life here to take a crack back. The only thing I don't love about the crack back is that Kyle is going to gain a couple life here. Off of the survival ability. Another manifest off the twist reality. That makes me even happier that I just unlocked the room instead of casting a spell. Kind of just by default let us play around that counter spell. Send in the team. Decent damage here, but we're at 24, so we'll just take it. Kyle's at 7. We have 6 power of flyers on board, so we can't lethal here, and especially not against the meat locker. Stun the fear of infinity for a while, so we're not gaining life anymore. Then unlock the aquarium. So we want to stun... Probably want to bounce the survivor so Kyle doesn't gain life anymore, and two turns of swings are potentially lethal. Yeah, vanish from sight, the survivor. Do I do it while he's tapped out? He's got nothing to tap the survivor with anyway. Yeah, I mean, this is going to let him redraw it, but... Oops. But then he can't have a counter spell for this to gain the life. So put it on the bottom is the play. Flyers or reach creatures. Draw three, discard one. It's some digging. And even if it is a flyer reach creature, we can stun. So as long as it doesn't kill our Piranha Fly, we'll get the kill here. No blocks. Down to seven. Nothing to kill the Piranha Fly, please? No. Oh, Flood Pit's Drowner, and I don't have a Counterspell here. Man. I can survive this meat locker. Kill next turn with Fear of Infinity instead. Just on the Drowner. She keeps that. Okay, just all lands manifested. That doesn't block Fear of Infinity. That doesn't block Fear of Infinity. That doesn't block Fear of Infinity. For our final game, we find the victory narrowly against Kyle Rose, the Ham TV. A very nice deck from him. Really, all it would have taken was just one or two more of those manifest cards actually hitting a creature. And uh, that would have ended in his favor instead of ours. Really, really close game of magic there. But solid luck and some pretty fun stuff from the blue-black flyers control deck. Cool stuff from the deck overall.
So here's a one last look at the final Duskmorn deck list. Very fun little blue-black build here. Nice to do something different again. Had a decent bit of variety during the uh, Duskmorn events. Definitely enjoyed, I think, these blue decks the most. I had the most fun with them. This blue-black and the blue-red rooms deck for sure. Blue-red rooms was my number one. Have not really enjoyed the green decks too much. The manifesting, milling around, trying to reanimate stuff kind of nonsense. It's, it's like cool, it's just not as much my cup of tea. These blue decks have been surprisingly uh, pretty exciting to me though. So yeah, I'm excited for the format. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it, obviously. All the graveyard nonsense, graveyard recursion. There's a lot of enchantment-based decks. I really want to try out the blue-white deck because... I had a lot of fun with Blue Red Rooms, which is very enchantment based, and Blue Black Eerie Flyers, which is very enchantment based. Um, so I'd love to try Blue White out. That's like the really aggressive version of these enchantment based decks. Yeah, Blue Black is like control enchantments, Blue White is aggro enchantments, and Blue Red is tempo enchantments, or combo enchantments, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty cool. It's a very cool format with a lot of stuff going on, so. So that's going to end the Duskmorn Early Access event for me, but by the time this video is uploaded, the full sh set should be out on Arena, so you can go draft it right now. And if you want to see me draft the set more, I'm going to be doing it every day for plenty of weeks to come. It is going to be the main format, and I am ready to dive deep into it. There's plenty of cool stuff you can do, uh, even if you're not super into the green decks like myself. I've, I've really, the survival mechanic as a whole has just been kind of annoying to me. So I'm kind of avoiding that stuff. I like the blue a lot, though, so maybe we do some blue-red, some blue-black, some blue-white. But I'll play a little bit of everything, as always. Try to learn the format to the best of my ability, give you all the best tips that I can, and play as competitively as I can. But I am very busy lately. I've got a lot of both work and family events coming up over a lot of the coming weekends. So we'll see if the Arena Open actually lines up to a weekend when I'm free. But there's a chance I won't actually be able to do the Arena Open for Duskmorn this time around. So we may just be doing a bunch of Premier Drafts. Might not actually get, to get super competitive with the format. But we'll see. We'll see how it lines up. If it's a free weekend, I will absolutely be doing that event like always. So uh, yeah, that was a whole long spiel to end the uh, Duskmorn Early Access event. But I should probably top that off with one final thank you very much to Wizards of the Coast. Always a great time to be able to play in these events and show you all the new cards a couple days early. So I hope you all enjoyed your pre-releases. I hope you're all grinding out some drafts on Arena right now if you're interested in that and getting into the set and, and having a great time. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.